Hi everybody and welcome to the very first oil painting on the brand new oil painting channel from me so let's roll that in. Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, it is the very first new oil painting on my brand new oil painting channel. And I am so excited. Now, there are lots of firsts happening tonight. One, it is in the evening and I'm doing this after a full day at the gallery. But at the same time, it's for a long time since I've sat at my easel and painted so I'm really looking forward to that as well now what am I painting for you well I'm going to be painting a bumblebee I've enjoyed a lot of sales recently from painting these bees and every bee painting that I sell or create and then sell some of that money is going to be conservation so if you go on my website and you like one of my bee paintings you want to buy it know that when you do some of that money will go into conserving this beautiful species in the future this bee is a carder common carder bee i believe if you know better please put it in the comment section and enlighten me i'd love to know if i'm wrong uh, but i think it's a common or garden carder bee it's one of the bombus genus anyway and i'm going to paint it on a yellow budlia so as i always tell you on the other channel all the reference for this uh, particular painting can be found on my Patreon channel. You do not need to be a patron to go there and download it. It's there for you to do that for free to learn from and have a go at. But while you're there, if you do fancy getting involved or at least having a look around with the, paper, uh, with the Patreon, please get involved. You'll be so welcome. Love to have you on board, but you don't have to. But Please download the reference and have a go at this one. It's a great project and I'm sure you'll get something from it. In the meantime, I'm going to get on and we're going to get this bee painted, I hope. So I'm going to catch you all at the end. We'll have a little sum up and I don't know how it's going to turn out. I really hope you enjoy it anyway. I'm really excited. So let's crack on. So I do hope that uh, you enjoy this. It's an impromptu one in a way just to get the channel underway. And I just felt that I would like to um, sort of welcome you with a brand new painting. So anyway, now that's my zest it. Here I've got English distilled turpentine in there. And here I have a, a drying medium. Now this is a matte medium varnish with some secative dryer, which is cobalt secative dryer. And that's actually helps the whole thing dry off and I use that quite a bit these days I've used it on and off during my career and I'm going to use it now now I'm going to be drawing in um, some what should we draw in some umber uh, some burnt sienna sorry let's draw in that dip some of that out there and we can start drawing our bee now it's an enlarged bee of course it is but I just love painting bees right now I've got to say so I'm going to get on with the drawing and uh, see how we get on with this. So I'm just going to put in the eye, suggest so the eye, then we've got the head across there. So I'm going to say this gloss medium or matte medium in this case of varnish is what I'm using. And so we've got the eye coming up a little bit. So I'm going to rub back a little bit. This is an oatmeal canvas and um, it, I just love the natural glazed canvases. They really are a lot of fun to paint on. This is a, I think it's Grumbacker. Not too sure of the name. It's coming with a little bit of umber into that just to make that drawing stand out a little bit more for you. I'm just suggesting the antennae first and foremost. You can't see too much of the mouth parts because they're disappearing there. You've got a nice sort of leg coming up in here and it's quite interesting actually because i used to paint all the time on this on the easel this is my prime easel for many many years and for the last couple of years because i've been doing a lot of stuff on on youtube and also patreon on the flat 
I've got used to painting on the flat to a point, and, and this is actually, my shoulders already, I've only barely started, and my shoulders sort of saying, oh dear, you're unfit, chum. <laughs> it just goes to show you how unfit you can get. Anyway, let's come out here, let's just draw out the thorax. Uh, there's the thorax and the abdomen, and that sort of curves round quite sharply. I'll give that a nice bit of weight. We've got those back wings coming off of there and we've got a lovely sort of whitish um, hairs on the back of this. Lots of dark. And I'm going to come in with some more umber, a little bit more of that mix. And let's just come in and sort of suggest those bands of dark in that sort of tail area there. And what we're painting it on, well this particular bee is visiting a whole raft of yellow flowers that are part of a yellow buddleia that we have in the garden. So I'm going to sort of suggest a few of those like that very, very quickly. Now I'm going to just come in close on the image of the bee so I can see where that back leg, long back leg, let's just try and get that about right, nice bulbous on the end. And then we've got the next segment coming off there. So I'm going to paint that in, paint that in. And then you've got the lovely little sort of legs to the foot that holding it onto the, onto the petals. And we have the other leg here, quite a large lump again, the second leg, big, lump of plated armor on that leg and a second segment off from there coming down and again we've got a nice uh, image of those tapers so i'm going to look at the uh, whole thing in a moment just to see that we are about where we should be that's the forward leg coming past this one and just got a little bit of that there. So I need to check where we got the underneath here, all that lovely hair, and deep into here, lovely hair. And then just to suggest that really doesn't go at that angle, it comes out there. I'm gonna just rub into that, take that away. Nice thing about good canvas and some medium, you can soon rub back the oil and um, carry on. Just get on with it. Use the rag like an eraser. And now that there is a bit deceptive because that's the other back leg on the other side. I'm going to suggest that merely just as that mark there. Because what we've got to do is we've got these little areas here which are the hair of the sort of segments on this back. So there's one there, that one goes through there, that one there and so forth until it sort of disappears around there. Okay, I'm quite happy with that as a drawing so far. Now I'm gonna just correct and look at this. We've got the back of the thorax there, and we've got these lovely dark and light colors, and this beautiful, beautiful um, orangey yellows on the top here coming right the way over. We're gonna make a lot of those if we can. Now on some recently painted uh, series of bees, I just used smaller panels of oatmeal on, ca on canvas board. And I merely left the background as oatmeal canvas or natural canvas. Really quite an effective feel to that. And I don't mind doing that on this, but actually I wanted to do this one with just a little of some of the background. And what I'm going to do is sort of make quite a bit of this going off the page, nice and big, I think. Put a bit more of my gunk in there, just to give me some beautiful sort of shapes to these little bell, bell flowers, bell-shaped flowers of the um, buddleia. And I mean, the bee is not a huge one. It's not like one of the great big bumblebees. I think this is called a garden carder bee, but you'll be happy to correct me if I'm wrong, and I do stand to be corrected, but I think it is a common or a garden carder. Um, but as I say, <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I need to sort of look this up there. Trouble is there are a lot of bee species in the UK, 
and some of them are so hard to differentiate between one and another so I'm not quite sure I'm going to go for a comment or garden cardaby and please feel free to put a comment underneath this and uh, let me know that I'm wrong and that'll be great I don't mind that and if you know a lot about your bees then please help me out by <laughs> telling me which one it really is now there's a couple of stems we can see here on this one these uh, buddia these yellow buddia are wonderful now this is a mature flower but when they first start evolving and the and the little petals are starting to come out they're very blue and very mauvey pinky blue colors and they slowly change to the yellow it's a real stunning uh, looking flower when it gets when it starts off and so some of the photographs I've got are with the, the purples and others are with the um, blues in them. Now I'm going to suggest that there are some sort of softer yellows back up here to break up some of this background just to give, I'm not going to put too much detail in, it's just going to be some different colours and maybe a bit of green and maybe just a little bit of something else down here just to break it up a little bit. But I quite like that arrangement. I like the high on this. It's a little central to the eye, if you're honest about it, if, if I'm being honest with it. But I didn't want to put it too far over here, so I think the bee's just enough off-center to get away with it. All right, so that's that. I'm going to clean the brush. And let's get started. Let us start putting in some darks. Now I'm going to use a bigger brush now. I'm going to come up to, and I have one of my favorites in here, I'm sure I do, some nice daggers couple of nice daggers. I'm going to have these on hand, ready to go when I want them. But for the short term, I'm just going to use a bit of the um, drying medium and I'm going to start suggesting some of the greens. I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt green, a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow. Now that is the um, deep and it's a little strong, so I'm going to come back with a bit more green into that. And I want to kill off some of the green color. I don't want it too much green. So I'm going to put a little red into that. And red and green, of course, are complementary. And they will kill each other off. Now, I haven't made a thick mix. I just want to simply scratch some on there and just see what this is going to look like with that sort of greenish background. I can come back in later and add to those colors. I'm merely trying to set the whole scene up really a little touch of that red in there probably a bit too much no, i think we get away with that okay let's just come back through here take that down it would have been quite nice to have left the uh, natural canvas but i really do like the idea of making this one a full painting as opposed to just a sort of cameo uh, effect with the bee. Both ways work though. It's entirely what you feel, you know, how you feel about it. I'm going to leave that quite like that. Just maybe bring a little bit more this way, put a little bit of blue into some of that. Now that was not the right blue, but never mind. We'll, we'll overcome that, put a bit of red into that little bit of the yellow ochre back into there and we'll come back in and we've got a seriously cooler darker green not a problem with any of that it hasn't got much fluid to it so let's just give it a little bit of uh, free movement with adding some of that medium i will put the details of this medium in the description underneath this video so anyway we've got this scribbled in place and I think that will probably do. Clean out the brush, and I want to come in with some serious darks. Now I've got my burnt umber, and I've got my uh, ultramarine, not too much of that left, but let's just bring that into my dark, and let's just start bringing in a bit more detail with that. Now that's a little bit too wet with paint, so I'm gonna put that brush down. Just gonna come back in with a smaller brush, pick up a bit more ultramarine, and let's just bring that into behind the eye down through there. I'm sort of using my little finger here to rest on the canvas so that I don't suddenly put paint where I don't want it. I'm trying to create 
those lovely illusions of the light that this thing has got. So I'm just coming in and I'm just tapping away with the whole idea of the head, the thorax coming on afterwards. I'm just going to suggest the antennae at this stage, I'm not going to make them um, concrete as it were. I'm going to put that leg in and it sort of bulbous out a little bit and it comes under, tucks under that one and we've got this one here which is much thicker than I've allowed or I haven't I done that part. Yeah I'd say that's that part there, sorry I'm getting a little mixed up. That's that big bulbous like thigh big plate of um, protection on that leg there. I suppose when you think about it, because these are exoskeleton on these legs and limbs, but they've got to be really strong because, you know, these things are not light and they have to grip on for dear life to very, very tiny petals. So they do have to be extremely strong plates of um, muscle or exoskeleton covering the muscle, I'm guessing. I'm just going to suggest where those wing cases that are folded at the moment come over and they extend beyond the tail there like so. Okay, let's bring this up, this shape here. And we've got a definite shape, but a lot of this is that beautiful, beautiful uh, pale hairs that are emanating from the body. Then we come round to this shape. We've got a lot of dark hairs coming off here. I'm just softly bristling that into, scratching that into that green. So we've got a sense that that's already breaking into that lovely shape of the green beyond it. That works quite well. And let's continue a pace. Let's get that down there and this down here, this down here and so on. And again, we've got lumps of dark, but giving way to the lovely orangey feathery, uh, deeper oranges under here as part of the coloration and the hairs emanating from that part of the abdomen. And we've got a lot of dark in here. Let's get that in. Okay, so pretty much the dark is done. And I'm just tapping away. I'm just tapping where I think. See, that comes up a little higher than it should do. So I might have to wipe that out. Take that away and bring that wing casing that way. It does have a nice little bow in it, so I think it sort of comes out and down like that. Quite like that. Okay, so now I'm going to come in, I'm going to put in the start of my flowers. I'm going to put in deep orange. I'm using Indian yellow and some cadmium red. Probably a little too red if anything. But I'm just going to sort of tap in maybe a bit more yellow. Tap in some nice orangey marks. There are some soft ones up in here which I'm going to play around with later. Just tapping those in place. And just one or two in here which are you know, the centers of the flowers. Let's just remix our reds again and our Indian yellow. Maybe just add a little bit of Joie Brilliant in there. Just soften the impact and take some of the color out, some, lessen some of the impact of the oranges. I'm just going to put those back in place, like that. Lovely orangey centers. Probably not where they should be at all, but they work. For me, that's fine. I'm just going to literally dance this over because this is not actually going to be a big it's all part of a buddleia, but it's not the actual one that this bee is on. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to use a little bit of my mix, a little bit of white into that, not too much, because it's quite strong. I just want to put in some yellows that signify some of the softness of the flowers beyond the bee at this point. Coming out there. Isolating the head, which is great. Take that through there. Don't worry about losing the definition of the antennae. We can pull those back in later on. I'm just simply trying to mix it up a little bit so that I can see 
all these wonderful yellows in the other buddleia. But I don't want them too light. That's the thing. Be careful at this point. I don't want the colour here to be too light because I want the buddleia that's here to be much brighter. So I'm just going to keep that quite low key. Just really low key. Don't go too overboard with that. Around here with this quite a reddish colour around here. Quite deep orange gingery colours. Really um, punchy on the chroma. So that we keep that nice depth in there. That's good. Keeping that really strong. And there's just a little bit down here. I'm just going to start suggesting that. Just bring, bring in off a little tap or two. Not too deep. We're going to come in and we're going to refine some of that. But that's just to give an indication to the colour. Okay, so I'm going to come in with more white now against that yellow. Maybe a little bit of the Jean Brilliant in there. And that's sort of just to create that nice bit of light that we can just see in here. And maybe mine's a little light, a little brighter than the one that you can see in the photo. But not to worry, I quite like that. It just makes the whole thing stand out. I'm going to suggest a little grays of color through there, which you're going to work on. We're going to use a rigger. And we're going to change how we see this. I just wanted to drag some in. Be careful how far you drag it in because as you can see here it's picking up and it's going to go and turn grey. But not a problem right now. We will overcome that. I'm just going to come in and just flick a few stray hairs with the very tip edge of this brush. Now it's very easy to do this if you're very very careful. If you've got a good brush too. I've got this is um, meant to be a long filbert, but look how flat it's gone because their hairs, this is what they call an evergreen from Rosemary and Company and they are very very flexible and they can adapt themselves nicely into a little sharp edge that you can then refine linear marks with, much like a rigger. I'm just being a little lazy and not picking a rigger up right this time. But that gives me an idea of where I want to take some of these. And I'm going to come and do the same thing. I'm going to pick up just a little touch of the medium just to make the paint spread a bit more. I'm going to rest my finger again. I'm just going to come in here and suggest a little bit of light in one or two places. And uh, before we carry on, it's got a nice little area of shadowed light in there. Which I don't want to turn it to a dull grey either. There we go. I think we're winning. I think we're doing quite well. Now I'm going to find my rigger and get it ready. And no, I haven't got CAD light on there. I've got CAD deep and lemon. I'm putting a little bit together. Will give me a CAD near medium colour. So I'm just going to come in here and just going to play around with the suggested soft edge against the back there. Again, this is this present flower, but it's further enough back that it appears to be blown out or it could actually be part of this one in fact you know I'm not I don't think I, that's wrong I think it is part of the one over here so we get rid of some of that other um, darker oatmeal color of the natural canvas so let's just come in and I'm going to just start playing around now with one or two of these shapes and I'm going to make them a little bit brighter a little bit more lemon in them as they sort of show up on the edges of the petals now I am not trying to paint actual petals or anything. I just want to give you the sense of these beautiful little flowerlets on the buddleia. That's the idea. I'm just going to keep drawing them. I don't think the ones that I've got are big enough. I think when you look at the scale of the photo and the flowers in the photo, I think I need to maybe make some of those petals somewhat larger than I have them at the moment. So I'm going to sort of just increase the sizes of some of these flowers and hopefully I'll get it right. Lovely lemons up in here, lovely light colours as these flowers catch the light and go up into this area here. So we're going to make quite a bit of that. Bring on these down, these shapes. 
And again, I'm making up areas because the photograph is not actually showing them. I can actually pull the photograph out and make more and see more. But at the moment, I'm quite happy with the degree that I'm seeing the actual insect. I'm going to stay with that. A little bit more mix, a little bit more at the other medium into that. Now, I haven't touched the English distilled turpentine tonight. I'm just going with the one mixing medium, which is that um, matte medium and varnish. I find it quite an interesting uh, medium to work with. Now, I'm going to suggest these have got these little stalks here. So I'm going to suggest those with a little bit more red, a little bit more orange. We're going to put some shadows into some of those later on. They are just suggestive. Oh, a little bit of green into that red wouldn't go and miss either. So they're going to get some darks in there, but I just want to suggest the little trumpets. The little flowers have these little trumpets emanating from the flower stem. I don't know quite. Riser, I don't know what they're called. I think there is actually a name for them, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. But uh, again, feel free to point me in the right direction of the correct answer. Okay, so that's enough of the flower for to be going on with. So now I'm going to come back to the rigger and I'm going to start to refine now. Okay, so this is just a crude piece of stick. It's simply a mole stick, which is its probably common name. And I'm using that to keep my area like this. I would like to get one of my other ones, but I got it out in the van ready to go plein air work with so that's not to hand right now so kind of put in a little cool color around the top of this eye as i say now we've done all the sort of prep work now we're coming back in and we're starting to refine our painting we're starting on the second layer we've pretty much got the first one done in place but we are now going to start working on the second layer the finer layers and make that a little darker. Okay, I'm just going to start looking at this. Now, every time you do a pass, every time you do the next layer, so the layer before was, was quick, and the layer that is subsequent, as you refine, you put less on, but it takes more time to do it. Because obviously you're looking at the detail, you're refining that detail, and you're starting to put more information in so that you can bring it to a close. I'm just going to put in a few sort of lights in there. Coming down to the edge of the eye. There's quite a bit of light in there, but we're going to put some darks back in also. Coming down there, I'm going to put a few lights in down the part of the eye there. So we're isolating the eye, so the eye itself in there. And I want to come in very quickly. I want to use some real strong yellows. And I'm going to put a bit of my mix in. Don't hit the bottom because you're going to lose a bit of paint in there. Eventually you'll turn that mix to a horrible, dull, painty goop. And you don't, you really got to be careful of that. This is quite a yellow on here. I want to capture that. I want to keep that nice and fresh. I'm going to come back in. And I'm starting to work lots of very, very fine detail. I'll probably hone in on this so you can see it a little bit closer. And while I'm painting this, I wanted to ask your opinions. Now, it, when you're working on an easel like this, it's extremely hard to get, you can't put the camera straight in front. When you work overhead, you can have the camera above the painting and you get almost not quite, but almost a square on image to the canvas or painting or paper or whatever it is you're doing. But when you're working on an easel like this, the same as when I'm working out in the field plein air, you can only have the camera set over your left shoulder if you're right handed and over your right shoulder if you're left handed. And because of that, you do tend to lose a little bit of an angle. So. I can't see how that looks because I'm actually right in the middle of the painting, but I'm hoping that you guys will be able to tell me 
if it works for you, is it detrimental to the viewing? I hope it's not, because there are little answers that I know of that can actually change that. So I'm really hoping that um, you all turn around and say, no, Paul, that is absolutely fine. It looked good. It worked, etc., etc." Um, I would be devastated if I got to really try and rethink how I position cameras to, to create some pieces of art for you and to teach you or show you at least how I use oils. So let's hope that it doesn't get to that. Let's hope that uh, you guys say that it all works. But feel free to tell me otherwise if it doesn't. I'm not going to be too offended. I just don't know quite what the answers will be. Nice little strong orange in there. Some of those are just picking up through that coloration on that back. And that just extends into the green beautifully. Okay, so I'm going to bring some of those lighter colors in here. Let's just go back into our mix. I'm mixing a whole raft of different yellows, as you can see. Strengths are varying with degrees of white and uh, the Joan Brilliant, which is like a Naples yellow, which is an opaque color. So they're all having an effect on the actual color you're seeing. But I think it's working quite nicely. I really don't. I'm going to clean the brush clean it out and come in with a slightly whiter value and I want to come this way and cooling some of these off a little bit. Now I think I need to put some darks back in there. They're going to turn a bit grey because they're going to be right on that lovely white. And I think I was a little too quick with all that white when I first started. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that white on the rigger come back into my darks which is going to be my ultramarine blue and my umbers and not so wet I'm just going to put in little taps of dark in here so that I can then go back over some of those with the lights that's not going to be a problem and we've got the back end of that thorax going up into there and the wing cases a little bit dark up in here take that into there I do hope this works out because I wanted to get this out for Friday for you guys to launch the new channel and give you something to look forward to watching. Um, I will try. I, I said in, a, in the watercolor channel, I, I put a video out there that really announced what was happening. And I will try as hard as I can to give the oil and the watercolors as much content as I can. I'm sort of sticking with the once a fortnight theme, if honest, because I know that that really is what it's been getting over this last year or two. And I sort of don't want to promise more and not deliver. But if I can do more, please be assured I will. It's, it's not easy um, filming, it's not easy editing, and it's... Um, the reason that part of that is not easy is because of the amount of time it takes to do all of it. So if the time is good and I get, as I said before, a little better at what I'm doing, then I promise I will try and add as much content as I really possibly can because I love to paint. I love for you to see what I do and to sort of show you how I do things and hopefully how you can maybe use those things in your own artwork but i think the bee's starting to come out i'm really quite excited about that right it's looking quite nice maybe a little more warm in there and i'm going to mix the darks between warm and cool so i put a bit of brown in there coming back in with a bit of pure ultramarine in there and although you don't quite see it with the naked eye the influences are between warm and cool and that works very very well I'm just kind of come up there and put that up a little higher that's good we get dips down there, that's good. We're coming this way, that's good too. So I'm going to put a bit of dark into that, which is the bottom end there and there and there. Beefing this up, we've got the leg and we're going to beef this area up in here. That comes down there, dark into that one, into there. We're going to clarify some of these shapes, don't worry too much. That's hidden by that nice edge of that flower, that's good. Okay, I'm going to put that brush down for a small time, 
come back to our lovely rigger put a bit of movement in terms of some fluid and let's go back in and let's see where we need to go now so we've got the light in there i'm going to put a little bit more over some of these darks so it looks like those darks are shadowy areas beneath those fairy bits gotta be a bit careful trying to suggest that we've got dark areas and light areas as they would have probably been better to have gone in dark as i've done here and then work the lights up over the top yeah, put a bit of orange they're quite deep and orangey in here that's one or two they come round this part they light here they're just picking up a little bit of light and just turning a little orangey as they come proud out from the edge of that thorax coming on we're getting there very slowly but we're getting there i use some of this dark i just want to put in some of the warmth and dark in here i don't know if i've got too blue or too brown and put a bit more amber to that just warm up some of these areas in here and put a little bit of ready orange into that just a little more warmer in the umber now i need to put a little bit of yellow back in here i think and feel that should be the case teasing that around a little bit and in there too just teasing and suggesting a little bit of color underneath I wanted more and I haven't got it but it's not the end of the world I think that is working and I think that works so I'm gonna leave it like that I'm not gonna keep on because if you keep on the more you mix the more you get one color and that really is the last thing you want to achieve you want to keep a lovely clarity in the chroma in your colors and the only way to do that is not keep continually putting the brush over the same spot and mixing two colors into one dull color a few of those lovely head hairs they're beautifully so hairy these creatures so much beautiful hair striking hair as well because you've got hair coming off in all directions and lovely shiny ones others are black others are yellow some are white bluish hues so many okay where are we okay i'm going to put some light into that and i need to come in now i'm going to put a bit of yellow and a little bit of white ish cool and maybe even not as bright as I've got it. It's sort of bright across the back there. It's picking up quite a bit of blue colour. So I don't mind that cooling down with a little bit of blue in there. And that sort of little clumps of it coming across the wing casings. Or at least blotting them out. They are hidden behind. I've got this lovely shape coming down here turn it in i love that i think it's so beautiful to see i can sit i've you know i since i've been doing a lot more bees and i've been taking many more photos of bees and other insects and i'm just in my back garden which just goes to prove you do not need to go far to get reference to paint from because these are all photos taken on my camera uh, in the back garden if you've got a macro lens that's fantastic it's not for everybody not everybody's got that sort of equipment but you know you can get quite a good photo with a, a cell phone a sun description as long as it's a nice good one one of these modern camera lenses so they can shoot 4k and you can bring that 4k into your uh, photo editor and create by bringing them in closer because you've got the reference and the information there so you can get away with an awful lot you can bring your little snaps of bees in and create them 
into much larger images. That really is nice. Okay, so I'm going to bring on down now and just come in here. I don't want to make this too light down here. That's way too light. So let's kill that off a little bit. Maybe a little bit of green in the orange, knocking it back. But I want it a bit brighter. That's probably not bad. Maybe a bit brighter than that would be good. Let's come up here with some of these. That's not so bad. Just the odd stray lighter one. And that just gives you, that creates a beautiful look. And they start to give, the orange goes to the white. So let's just bring that into play. Let's just suggest that these ones are turning orange as they come round, whiter as they go up. I had a, a very famous wildlife artist friend from years and years ago. Now I said that was part of the leg, so I've got to straighten that up. And he was a Scottish artist and um, he had a go at me for sitting down and painting all the time at shows. And he told me that, you know, to stand up laddie. I can't do a Scottish accent to save my life. Not very well anyway. Not without embarrassing myself, so I don't plan on trying. But in a very broad Scottish accent, he told me completely to stop sitting down to paint and stand up. You can step away and you can do that thing. Well, I don't happen to have enough room in here. Not that I can't get away from the canvas, but because I don't have enough headroom uh, in my um, nice uh, easel to be able to sit and literally stand away from it and uh, you know and stand up it'd be lovely if I could but unfortunately I can't so I have to sit and like so many of us modern houses the ceiling heights are just so darn low we cannot get close enough to them Can I put a little bit of blue color in just these bits of these wings just to suggest a little bit of light through them maybe even just a reflective bit of whitish color just to start suggesting some of the little veins that you can see. I don't want to go too mad because we've got that lovely bit of light from these uh, hairs and I don't want to lose that. So I'm just going to make very subtle suggestions. That's all it needs to be. I'm going to look at my greens very soon. Even if they didn't change, it's not the end of the world. They do look quite nice. But I'm going to thick them up. Thicken them up. A little bit of ochre into some of these. Maybe now a little bit of the uh, Jean Brilliant, just to cool them down. Just to give them that lovely cool colour which will work beautifully in the sort of ready oranges of this. Bit of skin come in there. Let's get rid of that. The ready oranges, so I just want to suggest that. But even if the paint is not that thick, let me pick that up. Never mind, it's not, not the end of the world. Um, even if the paint is not that thick as you complete this sort of area, especially around these plants, it doesn't matter. It's just to give you a sense of depth and perspective to the whole thing. Putting a little bit of lemon yellow into it just will change that green a little bit and just come back in. You can always go back over with some of these yellows if you want to. But I'm just going to stick to what I've got here. What you don't want is to draw a line around here with paint and create the illusion that there's a band of colour around it which suggests that you simply cut the B out and glued it in place. And that's of course not what you did. So you've got to be careful of that. Okay, I quite like the way that finishes up there. That's not bad. Take this off to the edge. Give that more solidity. And I'm going to come back in with that lovely colour, a little bit of white into that. It's quite pale, maybe too pale for the job. Actually, it's not so bad. I know it's darker there in the photo, but don't worry about that. This is your painting, it's your interpretation. I want to come down here and I want to give those wings just a bit more clarity from the green. So I'm just going to lighten that up through there. Now bring that all the way down. Again, like I said, do not leave a line of colour. If you're going to do that, then make sure you blend it right the way out so there is not a subtle line. There's just a little shade of line there, so I'm going to come back into it, get rid of that. I don't want that. So I don't mind that, I just didn't want that line. I want to put a nice 
bit of green in there. It's got a little bit too dark in there. So I put a bit of green in there. That's that. That's nice. We can come back in and tease some of those lovely hairs back out. But I've got that, essentially, I've got that green where I want it to be. And I want this cool green in here too, because that is nice against that lovely flower. I'm going to soften that edge between the two just by rolling the edge of the brush over the two and they start to blend together. Coming down here and let's just see that is quite a deeper green so let's come in with some more cobalt and a little bit of lemon, a little bit of that yellow too just to see where that takes that. Not bad. Okay I'm going to take that, I'm going to use that, bring that down through there, into there. We can come back out again with those hairs. I just want to get this green set up and sorted and done. And I can bring some and around some of these flower edges too. Attach some of that into there. And one or two, just very loosely painted in. One thing I might do is just not fully extend this painting to the ground. I find little statements like this are great you do not need to bring it all the way through to the bottom of the canvas. I'll see how I go. I see what it looks like. And I think that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Just make this sort of fairly sketchy as it comes down uh, to the bottom. And leave it like that. I like the idea of that. Okay, so if that's the case, we've got to really start honing in on our flowers. I don't know how long we've been on this painting. Could well be a nice long one. In which case, guys, you're going to get a great start to this uh, new video channel of all plain air oils. And not just plain air. Did I say plain air oils? I meant oil painting. We'll have an element of plain air in it, of course. But uh, it's not all about plain air. All right. I want to make that nice and light with a lot of lemon. Very, very bright on here. Very lovely, bright flower heads or flowerlets florets florets I don't know but I'm not going to try and paint individual flowers nor their petals I'm simply trying to create a feeling beautiful lovely edges Like that. Just looking quite carefully. I don't want to overdo anything in particular. I just want to try and sort of get these about right so they do look as though they are what they're meant to be. And not just want to daub colours on there for the sake of it. There's no point in that. You do need to try and make something look or resemble what you're trying to achieve. And I think that's the same tone. So let's just come back in and play around with a few more of these shapes in here. I'm going to work with some of these centers as well. Now then, I've got to look at that. A bit more of the white, a little bit more, and a bit of the mix to make that white a bit stiff. So I'm going to look in here and I'm going to create the shape of one or two of these. Maybe looking at them a little closely now so that we've got definite little florets. And that's that stem that comes up, isn't it? So I've got to watch that. Don't want to lose that. But I want a shape of this one here like that. Maybe that's a stem again. I've got to watch these. I'm going to make that a flower. Nice big one at the bottom there. We'll put a nice red centre in that in a moment. And just one or two there just to finish this off. Okay. Losing a little bit of punch on that yellow, so let's put some white in, some more lemon into that. Just come back in with one or two stronger yellow marks.
Okay. I do hope that is looking a bit like a Buddleia. Or else I'm going to get the sack. Simple as that. Alright. I'll make some stronger whites off to one side. Take some of your white paint, mix to some of the lemon, and try and push up. Even that's not strong enough. So clean a lot of that lemon out. Come in with some pure white. Take it to the edge of the mix you had just now. A little bit of mix. That I say that that white is a little stiff. And I want to. That's better. I want to put that light catching up there. The light is just catching some of those edges, some of those yellows. in here there just mixing it up it may not even attach itself to the right flower but it's just the action of adding some beautiful little light uh, notes into the whole thing and there's quite a bit of white into some of those and when we come off just to finish the bee off then hopefully there will only be a case of doing one or two few marks left to bring him uh, to the finish, I hope. Uh, like that. Mustn't forget to put those lovely centers in. Okay, now I'm just checking where I need to put some more. I think this could be with a little bit in there. And I think there is a little bit of blue-violet still showing in one or two of these shapes. And just letting the end of the brush sort of spin around and create little snaky shapes that are... You can't tell whether it's a flower or another bit of the flower or the next flower or the last flower. But I hope overall it does signify that we've got our Buddleia flowers. I hope that looks okay. Nice strong light on the top as you'd expect and some much deeper needed yellows as we come down in here, so I'm going to put a few of those dark accents of strong cadmium yellow deep and even some orangey reds in there. Also a little bit too red, let's come back in with some yellow. <coughs> And there we said we're going to put a new one. So let's put that in there and again in there. I'm going to put a little bit of deeper ready blue in there. Just into the base of those flowers. Just in there. Signifying the depth of them, I think. And this is a painting from scratch. I will, <coughs> as I will do for all my videos in future I will endeavor to put the reference for you up on my Patreon. Now you don't have to be a Patreon member uh, to access the reference for this or any other of the videos that I put out on YouTube. If there's a piece of reference I will always try and remember to make sure that it's always on my Patreon channel for anyone wishing to download it to learn from. I don't mean to start using it in commercial ways, but just to learn from and enjoy, then please go onto my Patreon, download it. The line art will be there. If you're not happy about drawing, then the line art's going to be there as well. And yeah, just involve, get, have fun, see how you get on with it. And use some of that pink and that green together to just work these stems in a little more than I had. Not sure if they're convincing enough yet, but... Uh, Hopefully they are. I'm trying to suggest them. 
has a very pale greenish colour at their base. So I'm going to try and put that in. And then a very dark area between them, of course. So let's try and make sense of that. So let's just carve in around that shape in there. I don't know if that works. I quite like it, but I think I could do better. We'll look at that, and if I feel that it's okay, we'll live with it. Just trying to suggest that these are emanating out from it. I'm crazily going to put a flower in its way. I think that's sort of suggesting the idea that there is a bit of a stalk there to that flower. Hmm. Okay, well, as I said, I'm not actually painting the flowers in sense. I'm just trying to suggest bits. So maybe I can get away with that. I don't know. We'll see. Not sure about this. I think they might need another flower in there or something, or just a hint of something in there, just down in here. I'm going to do that very, very quickly. Okay, that means I've got to take that off there as well. <laughs> These things balloon out, don't they? they come to a lovely little point where that bee is sitting on right now. But I don't want to go in there. I'm quite happy with that is. What I could do, what I think I will do, just had the idea, is we'll sort of suggest that there, but we'll sort of just, I don't know, just pretend that there's more coming down here. We'll break that out a little bit. So it's sort of, I don't know, it's an unfinished sort of sketch in that sense. I quite like what that does. We can turn that a little more green if we wish to, coming down and away from it. So we just hint at that sort of green carrying on down, a bit of a glow in a sense to those. Quite like that a lot. Now I'm going to soften some of these oranges in here. Just one or two, just suggesting that we got some more yellows going on. There's a little bit more, that's a bit too red. Come back in with some yellow. There we go. Some more lemon. Just around one or two of the edges. I'm not trying to paint as much detail as this, but I'm just trying to break up some of that solid orange a little bit. Just make it look a little bit more as though we've got some flowers over the back there. More buddies, as it were. Maybe a little bit of light in through there, just suggesting the same sort of idea. Just breaking up some of that. And some of that under here too. I think I'm going to stop playing around a little bit and just kind of come in with a bit of definition in between some of these forms on the legs. So I'm cutting the negative space back in and creating the, the sort of sense of what's going on there. So I think that's fine. I think that works. Don't want to touch these. But I do want to put a little more orange. A sense of the distance. Nice bit of orange in there, just miss that. Yeah, I'm not unhappy with that, gotta say. It's little taps doesn't take a lot. I'm 
maybe a little bit more shade on some of these as they hit that green. I don't know. And it's not so bad. I'm going to bring that out a little bit more there. All right, okay, enough, 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 enough. Let's get back to our B. Let's finish this painting. So let's just check some of these shapes in here. Just refining a few of the marks that I've done. Okay. Slight yellowing of some of them in here. If you remember, we went back in with some of those greens. So we killed a few of those hairs off. So what I'm going to do is come over and re-establish a few of those marks. But I am going to make them a little stronger in chroma than they were before. So they really punch on that green. It won't hurt the look of the bee at all, but it will just sort of... I mean, it would be those sort of colours you're seeing had this been in sort of strong light. I don't want to make it look as though it is a strong light because obviously it's not going to catch that much light. It's going to catch a few light hairs. So I like what that's doing. Now one or two lightish ones emanating, creating, of course you've got these little bars between the uh, darks sort of showing the light. I'm going to live with those. I'm just going to pop back in with a little darker colours just to suggest the little areas between these dark bars in the segmentation of the, uh, ab I think it's the abdomen, the tail, whatever, what part this is called. I must check on the anatomy more. Gotta be said. There we go. Quite like that. Just break some of this up with the odd stray hair that's starting to create the forms. And the light hairs are not just in one place, they're all over the place, but they're just not catching as much light as other places. Now, what I must do, I must. Go back on my eye and let's just refine that all of that lovely bit of high light. Tapping some yellow into the blues in that lovely strong light accent there. And then I want to make some pure white and ultramarine just to give me a very, very dense blue around it intensifies that yellowish light. It's a little dark mark which I've missed, so let's just put that in. Little dark mark that comes across there. I don't know if that's a reflection of what it's seeing or whether or not that is the actual way the eye looks. I can't be honest and tell you that. I don't know. And now I'm sort of coming to sort of finish off this whole thing. And I'm putting things like the detail into the legs, the, the antennae, and the feet now. And then we're done. So just bear with me a little longer, and we will get this finished. I'm going to come in there and put the antennae in place. One is done. And we're going to run this one over through here. And down there. I like that. This one's a bit shorter, it's turned in, but I'm going to extend it a little bit there. Quite like doing that. I think that works. And we have got a little suggestion of its foot from the other side there. I don't want to make it sort of disappear, so I'm going to put in a segment so it is obviously a bit of a foot. If you just tap dash 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 it does look more like a foot than not a foot. I'm going to bring that down, check that dark, there's a really dark line there around the eye, put that in. And just come down here with the mouth parts 
I'm not quite sure how that's seen, but I think there's actually a bit of a white flower there. So I'm going to come back in with a little bit of highlight on that flower towards the finish just before we get to the end of this. I come in here with that shape around the top of that wing. There's a nice joint there that you don't always see, but there is a joint for each side for the wings coming out. There's a big muscle to make them work. So there is a big lump of dark muscle or um, part of it right there. I'm going to put a few dark marks in there. Okay. Do I need to go back into any of this? Well, I'm just going to come in here, I think. I'm going to check some dark on these legs. And then there's a few hairs there. And I just want to suggest those. Now we're putting in a little bit of blue value on these legs so that we can see that we've got a hardened sort of shell like that again on this one. You have a little bit of light on them as well. Not too much, but a little bit of light. There's a bit of coloration on this one as it goes up like that. And that's going to have just a very, very faint highlight right onto the front there and just a tap of little lights along there on that leg just to bring that leg to life here we've got a much orangey value as we come into here so i'm just going to literally glaze that across that dark so the dark will give way to some of that light like that and maybe a little redder as it comes down. It may be that it's reflecting the warmth of the yellow flowers. I really don't know, to be honest, but that's what I'm thinking. The same with this one on here. There's nice little glows to it. But then we've got some of that blue on there as well. I'll put that in and in there. Excellent. Okay. Same sort of thing now, last part, to the long back leg here. I'm going to bring that all the way down to about there. Very long section. Comes to a halt. And then we've got the reverse, it seems. The, the front end of it is not catching the light, but the back end of this one is like that. So let's put that in. A little bit more light to that. Just so it stands off a little bit better. It's just putting in a few sort of dullish hairs emanating from here. I'm going to put in one or two there and again in there. And just coming around that shape. Okay, quite, that's fine I think. I think that'll do. Just want to reinforce this area here. We've got this nice little bit of foot. One and two. And then just those segmented sections of the foot or that last part of the leg going off up there. Can't see the other one, uh, but there is a shape here because this has got a very harsh point to it. Nice shape to this foot, this part of the leg. Nice hard edge, like a little hook. And let's just come back in and let's just put in a couple of areas here and a foot there. Yeah, I think we're done. We can keep playing around with these final details for a long, long time. And you could always, or you do at least always run the risk of creating an issue where you lose detail and wish you hadn't done what you've done. So for the last part, I'm just going to come in, a bit of orange into my green. All right, so just to break up some of these values and not touching that orange, but coming away, coming down. So it just breaks up that green a little bit and just tap some down into this color here just to give it a finish. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in with a bit of dark green. So I'm going to come back in with the last of that little bit of cobalt green on there. And I want to make a bit of umber into that. And just bring some of that just to... I don't want to 
I don't want to come round like this with it because it's going to mimic the B itself. So I'm going to let that phase out to nothing there into that area. I'm going to take it out there. The very thing we do, we are creatures of painting patterns and habits. We love nothing more than sort of repeat patterns and things. I think it's because we've all grown up with wallpaper. I don't know, I'm just saying it, but um, yeah. But you know, the thing would have been to just skirt it around that bee and created a lovely sort of pattern that mimicked the tail, but it would have looked awful. So I'm just gonna break this up a little bit in here. It was a little bit too obvious. Okay, I think we're done. I like what we've got, I like where it's at, and I'm going to call that probably finished, I think. I did need to put in a little bit of light on that petal up around here somewhere. I think it was around the mouth part there, Let's just put that in. So it looks like that is just disappearing behind there. Maybe it's similarly on that part there. Yeah. Okay. Job jobbed, I think. I'm just going to sign it now, and that's done. Okay, guys, that's it. The picture's finished. At least I hope it is. I had a heap of fun painting it for you this evening. It was quite refreshing to be able to once again set up my easel and have it in the upright position and go from start to finish in one session in a la prima as it were and get something that i quite like at the end of it so that's fantastic and as i say it's a long time since i've done that and i do hope that you'll go on to my patreon download the reference and have a go at this yourself while you're on the patreon why not take a look around at the tiers and see if you want to get involved you'd be so welcome but that's not what it's about. If you want to go over there and download the reference, please do that and have a crack at this one. And I do hope that you'll enjoy me for many, many more oil painting experiences, quick tips, how to's and lots of different types of painting that I plan on doing over the next year or so or even beyond that. There's also, don't forget, the, the plein air adventures. They will continue, uh, but everything that you've been seeing on my other channel will now be on this channel. So please, if you're not a subscriber yet, and I'm sure none of you really are, so please hit that subscribe button in earnest, click that bell icon, it'll tell you every time I upload something in the future. And in the meantime, please, happy painting, have fun, be creative, catch you all in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.